I will jump in with the question about hybrid work. Can you detail a, a little bit more and uh, speak uh, especially about uh, information war? Do we still have uh, media in, uh, in Russian? Well, Georgia is uh, actually one of these uh, um, real places where we don't have Russian media outlets. We have s several, actually, uh, but they are not the major ones or uh, broadcasting uh, thing, uh, nationwide. They are mostly on the internet based. But uh, uh, at the same time, I want to say that a lot of Russian opposition outlets, bloggers, and so on are operating from Georgia. Thank you very much. Can I ask the same question to Kazakhstan and to Moldova about hybrid threats and about information war? I think Moldova, uh, you closed the talk show on, in Russian, but not uh, all kind of destruction or broadcasting. It's true. Some Russian channels are still available in Moldova, but not the news uh, bulletins. However, what poses a bigger challenge is the so-called homegrown disinformation uh, when Russian proxies in Moldova um, own TV channels to, to propagate their narrative about the war. So currently um, the statistics shows that around 30% of population sees Russia's war against Ukraine through the prism of, um, of Russian propaganda, um, which of course uh, we spare no effort to, to counter. Um, including looking at the media ownership and, and putting stricter controls in place. Thank you, Olga. What about you, Mr. Vasilenko, well, about your country? Yeah, in Kazakhstan we do have Russian channels available, but so is Euronews and so is, so is BBC, so is CNN. But uh, I will tell you that uh, in Kazakhstan the media itself works in uh, Kazakh, but also Russian languages, in addition to 10 other languages of some other ethnic groups, such as Germans who live in Kazakhstan. So uh, the challenge for us is to uh, strengthen the informational independence, if you will, and to strengthen the resilience and the professionalism and the appeal of the Kazakh-owned uh, uh, media. Thank you very much.